The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Arrays help you to organize data in your sketches. They're almost like variables. Except that while a variable can only store one value at a time, arrays can store multiple values at the same time. Arrays are especially useful for controlling LED matrices, matrix keypads, and LCD displays. Creating an array is called initializing the array. The syntax of an array looks like this. Int is the data type of the array. This is the name of the array. The number inside the square brackets is called the array index. The array index defines the number of elements in the array. Elements are the values you want to store in the array. In this array, the elements are 3, 5, 2, 8, and 9. That's 5 elements, so the array index is 5. The elements in array are written inside curly brackets and are separated by commas. This is called an array initializer list. Arrays are zero indexed, which means that the first element is given an index of zero. The third element is index two, and so on. When we want to use the array's elements in a sketch, we do something called indexing. Say you want to print the number eight from this array to the serial monitor. To access an element in an array, we use the name of the array and put the index of the element in square brackets. The number 8 has an index of 3, so this will print out the number 8 to the serial monitor. In this example, I declared the size of the array and initialized it at the same time. But you can also declare arrays without initializing them. You can add elements to the array later in the sketch. To do that, write the name of the array, then put the index of the new element in square brackets. Set that equal to the element you want assigned to that index number. So this assigns the number 4 to index 2 of the array. You can also initialize an array without setting the size. So instead of putting the size of the array in square brackets like this, you can just leave the brackets empty and the size of the array will be determined automatically. Any data type can be used in an array, not just integers. You can use floats, strings, bytes, and cares. However, each element in the array needs to be of the same data type. There's one small caveat with using character arrays. 
and that's that the array size needs to be one larger than the number of actual characters. The extra element stores the null character. For example, to use an array of characters to store the word hello, you'd use this. There are only five characters in hello, but the array index is actually six. Arrays are commonly used with for loops. Some really useful applications of arrays are to automatically set pin numbers or control multiple pins. As an example of how to do that, let's build a circuit that controls an array of LEDs. The circuit is connected like this. There are six LEDs, with each anode connected to digital pins 7 to 12. The cathodes are connected to ground via a current limiting resistor. Since we have lots of pins all doing pretty much the same thing, this is a great place to use arrays. I'm using an array called LED pins to store the six pin numbers, pin 7 to pin 12. The setup section is where we set the pin modes for each pin. But now that we have the pins stored in an array, we can use a for loop to set them with just a few lines of code. We saw how loops can increment and decrement variables in the video on loops. Here, we're going to use that same concept to increment through each element in our LED pins array. I declare a count variable i and set it equal to zero. Then I set the condition of the for loop. The condition will set the indexes of the elements, not the actual values of the elements themselves. So i less than 6 means that this for loop will work for elements 0 to 5. And since there are 6 elements in the array, it'll increment through each one. Then i++ increments the count variable by 1 each time through the for loop. Inside the for loop, there's one pin mode function. Instead of entering a pin number for the first argument, I enter the LED pins array name with the count variable inside the square brackets. Each pin is going to be an output, so the second argument is output. So this for loop will loop six times, setting the pin mode to output for each element in the LED pins array. Now we move down to the loop section. I'm going to make each LED blink on and off for 500 milliseconds. Normally, we would have to write separate digital write high and lows for each pin. That would take a lot of lines of code. But with an array and a for loop, all we need is five lines of code. I declare count variable j and set it equal to zero. I still want to loop through each element in the array, so I set the condition to j less than six. So the for loop will go through each element of the array from 0 to 5. Then I use j++ to increment the count by 1 each time through the loop. Now inside the for loop, I have a digital write high and a digital write low, with delays in between each one. But instead of putting a pin number inside the digital write functions, all I need to do is use the array name with the count variable inside the square brackets. So this for loop is going to start at element 0, which corresponds to pin 12, write it high, delay for 500 milliseconds, then write it low, and delay for 500 milliseconds. Then j will increment by 1, so the second iteration of the for loop will act on element 1, which corresponds to pin 11. So pin 11 will be written high and low for 500 milliseconds. The for loop will continue all the way up to element 5, at which point it exits, and the sketch returns to the top of the void loop section. Then it enters the for loop again, starting the whole cycle over again. So each LED in the array should blink on and off one after the other. Let's see if it works. So there we go. The LEDs are blinking on and off one by one. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up with arrays. Up to this point, we've been working with what are known as one dimensional arrays, but there are also two dimensional arrays. One dimensional arrays can only store a single list of values, but two dimensional arrays can store two lists of values. 
we're going to see two-dimensional arrays when we learn how to set up matrix keypads. They're also useful for setting up two-dimensional LED arrays. The syntax is similar, but we just need to expand on the one-dimensional array a bit. This code will declare a two-dimensional array with six elements. The number in the first pair of square brackets sets the number of rows. The number in the second pair of brackets sets the number of elements in each row. So two and three defines a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns. The elements are enclosed inside two sets of curly brackets like this. Accessing the elements in a two-dimensional array is similar to accessing them in a one-dimensional array. The only difference is you need to specify both the row and column of the element. Remember that both one and two dimensional arrays are zero indexed. So if we have a two dimensional array like this one, and we want to access the number one in the top row first column, we'd need to use zero and zero inside the square brackets. This could be used in a serial print or a digital write or any other function. Say we want to print the number six here to the serial monitor. The row index is one and the column index is two. So the array index for the number six is one and two. We're going to see arrays a few more times in the coming videos. But for now, let's move on to a really important topic in programming, functions. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.